So here we are in the well shop of the Harrier. This is where the Omega Arc platform or architecture comes to life or where it comes together. And taking me for a quick tour is Mr. Mohan Savarkar, Tata Motors Vice President for its product line. Mohan, thanks for showing us around. My pleasure. Uh, we've obviously come to the end where uh, a lot of has it has been welded. But I think what it get what we get a sense is uh, there's some very complex joints over here yes getting those shut lines right uh to be honest i think that it can be a, sometimes a challenge pratap gives some fantastic shapes i'm sure makes the job a little difficult for you all yes sir. but i just want to understand you know when you uh, uh, uh the, the, let's say the welding part getting the finishes getting the quality what are various steps in that process so once we start with the architecture and the design that pratap has brought in for us so we have to make sure that we are able to split the design into doable parts. Yeah. Uh, and then the BRW, what you see here is where all these uh, uh, body in white parts are put together to make a total BRW. Right. Uh, which makes a lot of uh, influence on how the car will come out finally. So this is a very important part of the whole uh, car making part here. Right. Okay. And let's say these these uh, interesting shot lines, if I can point these out. And you know, over here. Uh, you've got, let's say, uh, this part is movable, this part is fixed. Right. Uh, does this cause a bit of a challenge, especially you know when you've got a tailgate to get it to line up? So what you see here is a number of parts that come together. Yeah. And it is important for us to make sure that the relative gaps between all these structures come out fine when the car is finally built. So what you see here is still very many parts are not here on the car. Right. So we have to simulate what is going to happen on the car right here in the BW to make sure that all the parts come out very well here right and you know to be honest i think it's been there has been constant improvement we, yeah. we, we did find a few gaps with the earlier cars but is that a question of constantly calibration of the tools getting the accuracies more and more fine-tuned to get to this point yeah so uh, in any car uh, a constant journey for improvement is always on uh, you would want to want yourself to improve on very many parameters and which is also to get the car build quality more and more and more and more refined. And this is something that we have always done in our well shop. And you'll see that, uh, I mean, uh, this is part of a life here. So with every car that we make, we collect a lot of data. And this data is used by us to make sure that the, the build keep on, keeps on improving. And as we keep going forward, you'll see that this process will continue in the future right. also. You said uh, it happens in the well shop. Let's go to the well shop because I think uh, that's really where it's all put together. Sure. Let's go. So, Mon, uh, sealant, quite important because uh, this is what gives the extra rigidity as well as uh, good for NVH. I mean, uh, I mean, welding is one thing. Is it, it does sealant sort of complement the welding or does fills the gaps where the welds don't go? Yeah. So, it has uh, the the station that we are in right now is a sealant station, and uh, what would happen here is that when you start spot welding around this, so there will still be some spaces in between. Exactly. So the job of the sealant is to make sure that the two sheet metals come together very nicely. Uh, so this will help us in, first of all, making sure that the joints are watertight. So in case of rain not coming in, for example, or wind not going in, for example, or dust not going in, for example, are things that uh, the sealant will achieve. Uh, there are, of course, many types of sealants that we use in the chocolate. And some of them are also adhesive strength giving uh, uh, sealants that we use here. So all these different types of sealants are used on the line to make sure that uh, in addition to the well spots, uh, we are making sure that the body is uh, extremely uh, sound proof, dust proof and, and waterproof yeah, right. and of course rigid. Yeah. So benefits are basically uh, refinement and uh, durability. Right. Right. Okay. Great. So now I think next step probably Let's go to where the wells are done because I think that is also quite critical. Yes, please. Let's go to the next shop. Got a, a nice first floor view. Yes, sir. Yeah. So from here you can see the whole line and how it goes forward. There. Great. So this is where all the welding is done. Yes. Sir. So what you're seeing here down below us is something called the framing station. Uh -huh. And uh, this is where the floor, the body size and the roof uh, they all come together as one unit for the first time uh, during the build of a car. Uh, and uh, this is all robotic. It's there's no manual. This is mainly uh, automated. Yeah, yeah. So, so the way that we have chosen our manufacturing processes is to make sure that we get the best dimensional accuracy 
and consistency across uh, all the body and vibes that we make here. And to do that, we have chosen robotics as the way to go. And uh, most of the spots that we do on this line are today robotic in nature. Right. Uh, and not only the spots, but also the way we move material, the way we move the body, is yeah. as you are seeing here, is quite robotic in nature. Okay. You know, you uh, you have told us in the presentation that Land Rover had a lot of input here, yeah. and that uh, you know the the people on the who built developed the line were here for almost a year. So. How did that work in terms of the coordination, cooperation between JLR and Tata Motors for this platform? I mean, it is a Land Rover platform after all. Uh, so the way that we went about that was, uh, so we brought the best experts that uh, Land Rover had at that point of time, who worked with us to make sure that the manufacturing processes are identical to the one that are there in Europe. And by that, we made sure that all the steps that need to be taken to produce an excellent body are in place even in this location for us. So what is common exactly? I mean, there are some common parts. Is the front common? Is, a, is, a, is the uh, firewall common? I mean, what, what's really common? Because obviously it's a completely different product. Uh, you've got your own unique uh, twist beam rear axle. You've got a different engine, uh, hydraulic steering, with the EPS. So I just want to understand what's really the core common components. So the way that we have gone about this is to make sure that the architecture hard points are carried over as is. So by that, what we mean is, let's say the suspension mounting point or the steering point or the uh, distance between the two wheels or the wheel track. So they are exactly the same as what a D8 platform has. So this is what ensures that the body rigidity as well as the dynamics of the car are very, very close to what you would find on the D8 architecture. Right. Even the wheel track is the same. The wheel track is In the fact, same. Even there was talk that you could have a discovery spot wheel slap on onto this yes, car. Yes, yes. So the, uh, the alloy wheels that we have chosen for this car at the beginning were the alloy wheels from JLR. Right, okay. So that's great. So clearly I think this is a very crucial area where minimal human intervention and automation to get the right level of uh, accuracy. That's right. Super. Let's go to the next, next step. Point. Sure. Which one is it? Uh, we will go to the place where we do the holes that are meant for the suspension. Ah, that's right. Okay, that's the last bit. That's the last on the wealth, on, on the That's right, yeah. Nice to see ladies on the uh, shop floor. Yeah. Very nice but, to see you. Here. Yeah, nice to see you. So, I mean, it's a... You typically think this is a man's job, but uh, clearly it's a job for everyone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, we have uh, had uh, people like her working for us for uh, recent past now. And uh, this is something that you will see that Tata Motors is going to do more and more. And you will see more women folk on our top load. Uh, That's really good to see. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Hope you're enjoying it. So we are now going to the uh, sunroof. Sunroof building okay. station. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy how how important sunroofs have become in India. Yeah. yeah. So surprisingly for us, uh, sunroofs these days are around 60, 65 percentage of our uh, total volumes. Did you hear that? 65 percent of Harrier volumes are the sunroof. sunroof. No wonder. But why did it take so long? I mean, a bit late. Did you feel that? Uh, Maybe you got a little caught out, should have been there prepared a bit earlier that the craze for sunroofs was much faster than anticipated or was it that in the manufacturing process it was just doing things a step at a time? No, no. The way that we started off with this was uh, there was always a belief that India being such a sunny and hot country, uh, sunroof is not something that Indian uh, customers will need. Right. Um, but we have seen that trend changing quite a bit over the last two years. And once we saw that trend catching on, so we didn't uh, want to miss the boat. Right. Uh, so even though Harrier had already been launched by then, so we went ahead and made sure that we could put a sunroof in place on Harrier. Right. And we could then time it along with the BSX. Right. And at that point of time, we could bring in the sunroof and the BSX together. So now that I've, I've got you here, manufacturing of a sunroof, you cut a hole in the roof, torsional rigidity goes, stiffness goes. How do you compensate for that? or? Does even the glass act as a kind of a bonded element to some extent and give you the required stiffness and strength? Um, maybe there is something to a uh, catch that we need to explain to you here. Uh, 
one would always think that a glass would tend to reduce the rigidity of the structure, but it's actually not so. The glass is as good or even better than sheet metal when it comes to rigidity. Right. In addition to that, as you can see on the uh, welding fixture here, the sunroof cutout is backed up by a huge structure that goes inside it. For extra reinforcement. Uh, that is meant as to provide the reinforcement to reduce, I mean, to compensate for the reduction in torsion strength and also to hold the sunroof in place and the sunroof mechanism in place. So this whole thing put together actually does not reduce rigidity at all. In fact, to some degree, it improves the torsion stiffness. But the weight has gone up. How much should the weight go up by typically in a yeah. sunroof? About 20, 30 kilos? No, so it depends on uh, the kind of sunroof that you put in the car. So our experience with this has been in the range of 12 to 15 kilos. That's it. That's it. Only thing is in the worst possible place, which is right on top. Uh, in a way, it, in a way, it is uh, most away from the center of gravity. Correct. That's what I meant. Yeah. Uh, but all said and done, the car has been made in such a way that it is robust enough yeah. to be able to provide for this extra sunroof. And that's what the customer wants. Customers want sunroof, so I guess you've got to give it to them. Yes. Sir. We are at the final station on the well line right now. Right. And uh, this is where the suspension mounting points are, are, are well. Okay. So, what's the advantage of that? Yeah. So, the way that we have planned the line is that all over the BRW shop, as uh, welding keeps on happening, so there is a likelihood of all the tolerances getting stacked up. And because of which, it is important to make sure that the most important points in the car are made in situ here on the line after measuring the car and making sure that the points are made exactly in the position that you want. So this is done by a piercing machine that you see to my left here. And when the next body comes here, you'll see that the piercing machine will come forward and make the holes after having measured the body. Right. So what you're saying is that from the suspension point of view, yeah. to get the absolute accurate geometry, yeah. uh, even from a tire wear point of view, I guess yeah. this is very critical. Yeah. So the way that we have gone for in this car is, we don't have adjustable suspension. So the adjusting has to be done only here, only in the BRW shop. Right. So in the final assembly shop, you just assemble the wheels right, 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 and right. Uh, leave it. Yeah, it's come so over what you here. see here is the next okay. operation is going to take place. So this is where the last final operation is. Right. So the green cylinders that you see here coming forward yeah. are going to do the punching job. I see. Okay. Right. Got it. So this is probably the most accurate yes. part. This is the, the most important part that needs to happen in the right. car. Because it affects the dynamics of the car. Right. Got the it. loud noise that you heard just now yeah. is the punching actually happening. Right. Wow. Okay, great. Because I'll be honest, tire wear has been traditionally an issue with uh, Tata Motors in the older days. I'm sure that that kind of has reset or had a strong focus on getting these basics completely right. Yeah. So as, as our car making uh, keeps on evolving, these are things that uh, one has to take care of yeah. for the next model. Yeah. I remember the, the Indica initially, there were some issues there. Sumo also, there were some issues. I'm talking about 10, 15 years yeah, ago, it's quite and in the past. Come a long way from there. We have come a long way. From Absolutely, you know, really good to see that uh, you know this sort of level of detail and process being followed. Again, was this? Um, I guess this is a probably a standard uh, process now in the industry and something you've even got from Land Rover. Uh, not many people do it yet. Right. But this is something we felt was the right way of doing things for this kind of car, uh, with the kind of capabilities that one expects from a SUV like this. Right. Great. Super. So, if tire wear is minimal, we know this is we the know. reason for it. Thanks. Thank you. So, that's a quick brief tour of where the Harrier is kind of welded together. We've not seen the entire building process. We've just seen what we call the body and white, which really is the most crucial part. And that is the secret sauce. That is where the common bits of the D8 platform of Land Rover is being used. And clearly, the Harrier has been a success. There are still a few gaps, Mr. Savarkar, in terms of petrol engines, uh, oh, yeah. in, in terms of uh, you know different body styles, uh, some gaps to be filled. But of course, it's an ongoing process. I think the result and the success has been amazing. As I mentioned earlier, numbers have jumped four times. It's a huge success. The flagship of the Tata Motors bottle range, the Harrier. That's what we've come to tell you about. Thanks for watching.